Are you just getting used to the hot weather and now you can feel the season changing to a cold weather pattern? Oh, how wonderfully warm the heat can feel on those aching bones. What a relief the sunshine can bring on the outlook of a day. But just what is causing this change in pain levels? A Wikipedia writer provides some insight. Quote, rheumatism or rheumatic disorder is a nonspecific term for medical problems affecting joints and connective tissue. The study of the study of and therapeutic intervention in such disorder is called rheumatology. The term covers such a range of different problems that to ascribe symptoms to rheumatism is not to say very much. Nevertheless, sources dealing with rheumatism tend to focus on arthritis. However, regional pain syndrome or soft tissue rheumatism can cause significant discomfort and difficulty. Furthermore, arthritis and rheumatism between them cover at least 200 different conditions. You may see it showing up as an ICD code which basically defines a condition. You can see them on your billing statement and these conditions have ICD codes of at least ICD-10 or ICD-9 among perhaps some others. These codes are easily found on the internet if wanting more information. There has, there has been said to be a link between rheumatic pain and the weather. There appears to be no firm evidence in favor or against, at least in the 1995 questionnaire given to 557 people by A. Nazer, and it concludes that changes in baromic pressure, or baromic pressure are the main link between weather and pain. Let me repeat that. It says it concluded that changes in barometric pressure are the main link between the weather and pain. Low pressure is generally associated with cold, wet weather and an increase in pain. Again, it's low pressure is generally associated with cold, wet weather and an increase in pain. Clear dry conditions signal high pressure and a decrease in pain. Let me say that again. Clear dry conditions signal high pressure and a decrease in pain. What are you noticing with the weather? Today, let's talk about it and discover additional opinions on the matter. Thank you for joining me, Estra, this August 3rd, 2013 for Talking About You with Estra on Block Talk Radio and Estra's TV, currently featured on YouTube under Estra's blog. Make sure not to be diverted to another link. My official website is E-S-T-R-A, pronounced Estra. So go to Estra's Blog Tips on Blogger for a listing of all legitimate links. This is your car accident show, sharing information and concerns that help you, family, friends, and community from an injured person's perspective, meaning the person hurt in a car wreck. Today's topic will be on you and cold weather after injury. Fall season brings beautiful colors, but also changes in chronic pain. Living in a location where there are all four seasons with the injury after a car accident, the injured may become sensitive to these changes. Also in our program today is personal injury in the news, providing comments on events and holidays of the coming week. My commentary on you and cold weather after injury. And last but not least, a discussion on the articles related to our topic. Many chronic pain patients recognize the weather change, but are unsure why it's impacting pain levels. Answers to these questions can be insightful, helpful, and allow recognition and awareness if there is an increase in pain during seasonal changes. Today will be an exploration on the possible answers. In this program, your challenges in dealing with insurance companies, self-insured employers, and coping with everyday situations from being involved in a car accident are up for discussion. Dial 718-766-4385. If you have cold weather injury comments, you are welcome to be a part of the program today. Again, the number is 718-766-4385. Our after the show number has changed. So if wanting to comment later on, place your comments on Talking About You with Estra on Facebook 
or tweet at Esther's Radio Show on Twitter. If watching on YouTube, make sure to leave a comment. Tune in every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on Block Talk Radio or view every Wednesday on Estra's TV, YouTube, user Estra's blog. We are coming to you from Seattle, Washington. Other notable mentions this week include Friendship Day, August 4th. Building relationships through friendships may create very lasting bonds. Having people to talk with about fun, serious, or just things of common interest enriches the lives of friends. Appreciating one's friendships is a great way of expressing how important they are in your life. Take a moment on August 4th to let your friends know how much they mean to you and help to inform and prepare them in case of a car accident by sending them a copy of book Car Accident by Estra. Your friends will thank you for having it available in their car at the time of a traffic collision. Friends taking care of each other is special. August 4th is a great way to express it. Also next week, on August 7th, we have Eid Ad Fitur, and it's a day of celebration. Timeanddate.com describes it as, quote, Many Muslims in the United States celebrate Eid Ad Fitur on the first day of Swal in the Islamic calendar. It marks the end of the month-long fast of Ramadan and the start of a feast that lasts up to three days in some countries, end quote. Awareness and understanding provides communication between people of a variety of belief systems. It is respect and consideration which demonstrates our civility and allows us to live in harmony with each other. When as human beings we move towards accomplishing this way of living together, we will have come a long way to achieving common decency in our dealings with each other. Respect begets respect. Happy feasting. Now our personal injury in the news this week. These are my views on current events and have no association with the writers of the article, unless of course they come from Estra's blog tips. From time to time I'll be stopping to take a moment to comment on a section. Can pets be a distraction while driving? Our first article from the OaklandPress.com, the title is Driver Accused in Warren Car Accident Was Distracted by Dog, Family Says, and it's by Norb France. You know, being down on your luck happens to millions of people each day. Unfortunately, it was a very bad day for a 27-year-old man, perhaps crippled with fear due to having Uh, caused the death of someone, driving when not legally able to, along with other issues we don't actually know about in this case, all collided together in an instant that changed this man's life forever. We must all be careful of distractions while driving. This includes any pets we may have in the car. The losses for many at the scene of this accident will be felt for many years to come. It only takes one second for someone's life to change or end in a car accident. You can find the link to this article out on my Facebook page, Talking About You with Estra, and also the Estra's blog tips. No matter where you are in the world, the unexpected can happen, so drive respectfully. Our second personal injury in the news comes from the Associated Press, And the title of the article is U.S. Diplomat Kills Man in Car Crash Leaves Kenya. And it's by Jason Strasio. I pronounced his name perhaps wrong. I apologize. You know, the article uh, also shows the snowball effect of a traffic collision and the impact of having it on foreign soil. It's been said that speed was a factor in this car accident. Not only has the life of this driver been changed, but those of his family and the family who lost loved ones and now are unsure how their family will be supported. Five minutes before this incident, the paths of their lives were very different. Let's hope that all can come together in the situation and do the right thing for everyone involved. The loss of life from a car accident is a shock and difficult to process for many. A link to this tragic situation can be read on my Facebook page, 
talking about you with Estra. May healing come sooner than later for both of these families. It's difficult whether being the person causing the injuries or being the injured person. No one is left unharmed in these circumstances. Best wishes on recovery from car accident, Jamie Lee Curtis. And that's our third personal injury in the news this week. And it comes to us from celebrity to opcom And the title of the article is Jamie Lee Curtis is resting after a car accident. You know, everyone is susceptible to being in a collision. And it is a happy occasion when the car accident ends with everyone surviving, unlike, unlike our two uh, first articles this week. But make sure to keep a copy of book Car Accident by Astra in your car. Typically, people are shook up at the scene of a car collision, and the checklist in the back of the book may assist you in documenting the event. Again, best wishes, Jamie Lee Curtis, for speedy recovery. You are a joy to see on the screen. Now for my commentary on you and cold weather after injury. Most times, thoughts of the weather come only at severe levels such as earthquakes, tornadoes, windstorms, and the like. Usually mild changes in condition do not require our attention and therefore receive very little of it. However, when barometric pressure changes generate a response physically, many pain sufferers can experience an increase level of discomfort. Recognizing and understanding what is happening physically can allow individuals to realize what is happening to their bodies and why. This allows the opportunity to adjust one's plans accordingly and prepare for possible increases in pain. On the good side, one can begin planning on the season soon approaching. Information is a tool which helps people with chronic pain learn about their condition and find ways of coping with how it impacts their lives. When answers are forthcoming, they can bring peace and comfort to a situation with little of both in some circumstance. Being able to answer the questions about an injury which occurred during a car accident and cold weather will be one more issue that can finally be put to rest. This topic has been researched by many and provides valuable insight. Again, comments on the articles reviewed today are my opinion and have no association with the writers. I'll be making comments time to time through it. So our first topic article comes from johnhopkinshealthalerts.com and the title of the article is Does Weather Affect Arthritic Pain? Quote, if you have arthritis, you may be among those people, and there are many, who feel that their arthritis pain is influenced by the weather, specifically that they experience more arthritic pain on cold, rainy days and less arthritic pain on warm, dry days. But research studies, including two recent reports on weather climate, really does not... Excuse me, I'll start that again. But research studies, including two recent reports on whether climate really does affect arthritic pain, has produced conflicting results. I just have to stop here for a minute. Have you always noticed how, no matter how many studies you have, you always are going to have uh, two opposite or conflicting results? And I, that's okay. Maybe that means that people are really delving into what they're researching. But also just remember that it's important to be able to glean from the majority of the way in which the, the research goes as to what's going on and what's happening or what you can take from the information. I'm going to go on here. The first study looked for a relationship between the weather and arthritis pain in 151 people with osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, or fibromyalgia, a rheumatic disorder that causes joint pain, as well as 32 people without arthritis. All participants lived in Cordoba City, Argentina, which has a warm climate. Participants kept a journal for one year recording the presence and features of any pain, and these daily reports were matched with weather conditions such as temperature, barometric pressure, and relative humidity. Patients in all three groups experienced more pain on days when the temperature was low so note it's temperature, they're talking about temperature, barometric pressure, and relative humidity, which means that they've kind of expanded uh, what they're actually looking for 
compared to the first uh, information we received earlier in the show. So that shows you that so many different people are evaluating different uh, parts of this as, as far as viewing how weather impacts uh, injury. I'm going to go on. Patients in all three groups experienced more pain on days when the temperature was low, while people in the group were unaffected by any of the uh, by any of the weather conditions. In addition, patients with rheumatoid arthritis were affected by high humidity and high pressure. Osteoarthritis patients by high humidity, and those with fibromyalgia by high pressure. However, the associations were not strong enough to allow pain to predict weather or vice versa. I think that's very interesting. I'm going to read that again because depending on what you might have be, have going on, you might want to kind of tune into that. So I'm going to read that again. It says, quote, patients in all three groups experienced more pain on days when the temperature was low, while people in the controlled group were unaffected by any of the weather conditions. In addition, Patients with rheumatoid arthritis were affected by high humidity and high pressure. Osteoarthritis patients were by high humidity and those with fibromyalgia by high pressure. However, the associations were not strong enough to allow pain to predict weather or vice versa. To me, that's very interesting. This is a very interesting article to actually go out and read. So make sure that you go out to the our Facebook talking about you and Estra and take a look at this article. I'm going to uh, read a little bit more from it. Quote, the other study took a look at 154 people average age 72 who lived in Florida and had osteoarthritis of the neck, hand, shoulder, knee, or foot. Participants reported that reported their arthritis pain scores for up to two years. Then researchers matched the scores with the daily temperature, barometric pressure, precipitation status. No significant associations were found between any of the weather conditions and osteoarthritis pain at any site, except for a slight association between rising barometric pressure and hand pain in women. So you can see that uh, John Hobson's done a great job of actually going out and breaking it down into different sections and trying to narrow it in. So to me, this is just a great uh, article. Quote, although some evidence exists that people living in warmer, drier climates experience fewer episodes of arthritic pain, climate does not affect the course of disease. At most, it may affect symptoms of arthritic pain. And that's good to know. So I'm going to leave it there so there's a bit of information out for you to, to go and read on this article. But it's just, it's great to know. And it's great to know that people are trying to research and see what those correlations are. Our next article comes to us from webmd.com. And the title of the article is, Does Weather Affect Joint Pain? And What Can We Do About It? And it's written by Catherine Cam, and also reviewed by Laura J. Martin, MD. Quote, it's typical for joint pain to start even before the first raindrop falls, says David Bornstein, MD, FACP, and FCAR, a rheumatologist and clinical professor of medicine at George Washington University Medical Center and past president of the American College of Rheumatology. If you really listen carefully to grandma or someone who had arthritis, they actually told you it was going to rain, he says. They said it's going to rain today and more likely than not, they were correct. How to explain? There is no full agreement among scientists that weather causes pain or a specific mechanism is at fault, Jameson says. But there are plausible theories. I have to stop here for a minute. And I enjoy this article because it's saying there's a wide range of ideas that people are saying is causing. But one of the things they do seem to understand is that the body speaks. Okay, I'm going to go on. One leading theory points to changes in air pressure. Although many people say that their pain worsens with damp, rainy weather, research has shown that it's not the cold wind, rain, or snow, Barson says. The thing that affects people is the barometric pressure. Barometric pressure is the weight of the atmosphere that surrounds us. If you imagine the tissue surrounding the joints to be like a balloon, 
A high barometric pressure that pushes against the body from the outside will keep the tissue from expanding. Okay, it says, but, but barometric pressure often drops before bad weather sets in. The lower air pressure pushes less against the body, allowing tissue to expand, and those expanded tissues can put pressure on the joints. It's very microscopic, and we can hardly notice except that we have these sensations, Jamison says. Furthermore, people, excuse me, furthermore, when people have chronic pain, sometimes nerves can become more sensitized because of injury, inflammation, scarring, or adhesions, Jamison says. I want to repeat that because uh, it's important for some people to hear. It says, furthermore, when people have chronic pain, sometimes nerves can become more sensitized because of injury, inflammation, scarring, adhesions, Jameson said. For whatever reason, the nerves are just hypersensitive and they just keep firing based on what you do or not for any reason at all. But if there's something... But if there's some expansion internally, then in other words, the body can either expand or contract based on outside pressure changes, then that's going to affect how pain is signaled. Nevertheless, the link between pain and weather changes remains hypothetical. Research has come to mixed conclusions, Jameson says. All the results are not very clean, meaning there are people who say that weather does affect their pain. And this is just, I mean, this is also a great article, and this shows how many different directions that people are, are coming at uh, this question. And to me, that's very important. And also, it also shows that people are, are getting bits and pieces of information that differ, differ or are just in a new area. So in my opinion, it just means that we're looking for this, this actually complete picture, which hasn't actually uh, come out come into view yet which will come because we have a lot of pieces so as we continue to research and add to those I it is my opinion that we'll come and we'll see how it all correlates to each other but this is a great article too I'm going to read just one more quick uh, part of it it says should you move to Florida or Arizona and it's, it's quote it's a question that doctors hear all the time from arthritic patients people with chronic pain if they can't get out much, as it's so cold all the time, or rainy or snowy, they think, boy, I'd like to go someplace where the weather isn't quite so dramatic, Jameson says, of his patients in Boston. Though he doesn't advise against moving to warmer climates, he does try to offer realistic expectations. There's no heaven on earth, he says. If you have awful back or neck pain, there's a good chance that that pain will travel with you. <laughs> In fact, in Jameson's research, people from San Diego reported the greatest sensitivity to weather changes, a surprise finding, considering that it had the warmest climate compared to Nashville and the two, and the two Massachusetts cities. So, uh, I think that's great, that line, there is no heaven on earth. <laughs> so, don't look for heaven on earth, just look for ways to improve uh, your health and condition and ways to feel better. And at least, hopefully, you're, you're gaining some understanding and insight if you are impacted by weather changes. And you know that that happens with many, many people. So make sure you can actually go out and read the full article again. It's out on uh, my Facebook, Talking About You with Estra. Or you can actually also read it out on Estra's blog tips there, too. Our next article comes to us from arthritistoday.org. And the title of the article is Weather and Arthritis Pain. And underneath it, there's a subtitle. It says, yes, the weather forecast can make you ache. Quote, it's not your imagination. The weather can cloud your health. Here's what research reveals about the connection between weather and arthritic pain. Changes in temperature or barometric pressure, a measure that refers to the weight of the surrounding air, trigger joint pain though researchers aren't sure why. In 2007, researchers at Tufts University in Boston reported that every 10 degree drop in temperature corresponds with the incremental increase in arthritis pain. Let me just say that again. It says every 10 degree drop in temperature 
corresponded with an incremental increase in arthritic pain. Increasing barometric pressure was also a pain trigger in the Tufts report. In fact, studies in cadavers have found that barometric pressure affects pressure inside the joints. In one experiment, when pressure in the hip joints were equated with atmospheric pressure, it threw the ball of the hip joint about one-third of an inch off track. Isn't that amazing? Isn't it great that there are people out there researching the things that matter to us? Very important. And that's how come we should continue to support research. And Congress has actually tried to abolish a lot of funding to a lot of research that helps make our lives better. And we need to think about that as we go to the polls in 2014 and decide, uh, is that the direction we really want our elected officials going? And if they're not going in the direction in which you think they should go, remember, you have the option to vote them out. But I'm going to go ahead and go back to the article here. It says, quote, studies have found that 50 to 80 percent of all people who get migraines believe weather can set off a headache. The exact weather patterns that particip- precipitate migraines remains a mystery, however. In a study published in 2004, Patricia Prince, MD of Boston's Children's Hospital, asked 77 migraine sufferers to keep calendars documenting their migraines over a period of two years. She compared those to records kept by the National Weather Service. About half of the study participants got migraines that coincided with weather changes, but not all were weather sensitive had the same triggers. Some seemed most vulnerable to a combination of high heat and high humidity, while others got headaches under the exact opposite conditions, low temperatures and low humidity, end quote. How interesting. I mean, it's just wonderful that people are taking the time to investigate some of this information. And there'll come a time when all the pieces will be together and the researchers and scientists can point and say, yes, we can finally see what the correlations are. And that's just great. But now you know, yes, weather and pain, there is a correlation. And if it's in your body, just, or I'll be surprised if you don't know this already, but hopefully you have a bit more of understanding as to what happens and why it happens and and where to look if you want more information. Thanks for being a part of today's show. You know, car accidents happen every single day to a lot of people, and being prepared and informed can reduce the suffering, confusions, and problems. Thanks for sharing part of your day with me. Remember to like us on Facebook at Talking About You with Estra, Estra's blog tips, especially while looking at today's links. Make sure to visit next Saturday at the same time, same place. That is at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on Talking About You with Estra on Block Talk Radio. Come talk, come listen, where you can just be yourself. Have a great day. Watch out for the weather.